Hey guys, what's up? It is Ripe again, back with a mix of Neighbors from Hell and Entitled People's Stories. In today's video, OP gets revenge on a bunch of entitled neighbors that steal his classic car. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled Neighbors Stole My Classic Car, I Got Their Kids Taken Away, Don't Mess With My Business. I own a car dealership business which I run out of a normal kind of lot. The only thing is that I worry about the security so when I get a car that is going to get a big price tag attached to it, I tend to store it in my home. If somebody wants to buy or test drive them, I bring the car to the lot that day and go from there. At the moment the story is taking place, I only had one car for sale that I felt was safer in my garage than in the lot. It was a classic car and for anybody super curious, it was a 1969 Corvette L88 convertible. This car was worth a little over half a million dollars and until some collector wanted to spend the money on it, I was keeping it locked in my garage. I know that seemed like a lot of backstory but I promise I'm almost done once I talk about the neighbors that live next door to me. I don't know too much about them but they have lived next to me for many years and always seemed okay. The situation was that I was at home with my kids while my wife went to do some grocery shopping and various other errands. I get a call that she was in a small crash and being taken to the hospital just in case. For anybody wondering, she was totally fine and I was the one freaking out more wanting to go meet her there. At first I was going to try and take the kids with me because I could not think of any other option. When I saw the neighbor though and she questioned my panic, I explained to her what was going on. She offered to babysit the kids for a couple of hours while I went and got things sorted out. I knew she had kids of her own so I figured, huh, what the heck, it will be fine. I let her into my house and fished out all the cash from my wallet telling her she could order in for her and the kids if they all start to get hungry. When I got home with my wife, neighbor was pretty quick to leave the house and go back to hers. I did not think anything strange of it because she probably had to get her own kids to bed. It was not until everything was settled and I went to do the dishes that I even noticed something was wrong in the first place. The kitchen has a door that connects to the garage and I noticed that it looked like somebody had taken an axe to it. The door has a special lock that I always have on me so that nobody can scope out my garage and see the cars I have in there. I could not believe what I was seeing and it was like one of those images where the more you look, the more wrong things you see. Most importantly, the car was gone but I will get back to that in just a second. The garage door itself needs a code to open and since they did not know it, they used something to brute force their way through that as well. I was furious and wanted to go stomp over and start screaming at her to give me my car back right now. My wife was resting and the kids were asleep since I got there and I was also barely awake. I figured that it could wait till the morning to get to the bottom of this so instead I sent her husband a text asking what the hell they did with my car. I woke up to no answer but what nobody noticed was that I have a camera set up in the garage. I mean, if I'm going to have locks and codes, a camera just makes sense. What all of us are thinking happens is what did and they got an axe from their house presumably and broke down the door to see what was in the garage. Then I saw them go out of frame and the garage door being destroyed. Finally, the husband got into the classic car and started driving it away while the wife went back into the house. There was no audio but I know my kids and can guarantee they were screaming in the background from all of that noise. Also, the probably $100 I left for a pizza was just totally gone but I had bigger fish to fry. The neighbors were still totally ignoring every attempt for me to get in contact with them and instead were holed up inside of their house. I would guess at least because I could hear their kids screaming and I saw their car was still parked in the front. I was going to be nice and give them a chance to do this the easy way and give it back but now that option was totally out the window and they were going to pay. Grand Theft Auto while a crime in itself is also dependent on what you steal. A car worth that much is a felony where I live and they were potentially going to end up in jail. 
I went to the police station with the video and telling them about the car and exactly what happened. It did not take long for them to get a warrant out for the neighbors to be arrested. Normally a story would end here with me getting the car back and them having to pay for the damage and go to jail, but actually it gets a little bit more interesting than that. It turns out that this was not the first time the neighbors had been arrested for theft. They were actually currently on probation for previous crimes and since they did not want to leave the house and see me, they both missed an appointment with their probation officer, which gets them in even more trouble. It turns out that these two were notorious petty thieves and seen on no less than 10 security cameras and just not been identified yet. So while the case for my car was going on, they were now also caught for various other crimes of theft that were smaller in nature. So they went to jail and I cannot really say for sure if it was because of them stealing my car. If they were never in trouble before they might have gotten off with probation. All of these things combined though there really was no other option but to send them to jail for the crimes they committed. The best bit though was when we were bringing up my car to them in court and the wife tried to argue that while all the other stuff was in fact stolen the car from me wasn't. She tried to come up with some story about how since she babysat my kids and I did not pay her, I agreed to let her take and use the car for a while instead. It was the dumbest story and they cut her off before she could continue to ramble about it. A few weeks later though, the car got sold and I am making sure my garage is even more secure before I end up with another expensive car to protect. As for her kids, they ended up going to live with their grandparents because the parents also lost custody since they were going to jail. I don't feel too bad about it though, because having those kinds of parents as role models, they might have ended up as criminals themselves. At least now they might have a chance to be taught right from wrong. And yeah ripe stars I gotta say recently we have quite a few stories about expensive cars getting stolen and it seems like cars especially make some people really jealous. And I suppose some entitled folks feel like they must also have such a car because that is why they just take it from a neighbor. Anyway, if you enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors, then I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and maybe even like the video. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled Loyal customer wants me fired for not serving alcohol and she is friends with the boss. I am the owner of the bar. I own a bar that has been around for a long time and was started by my grandfather. When he died my father took it over and recently he retired and passed the torch on to me. I have basically worked in the bar my entire life from sweeping up to learning how to bartend. Honestly not much about the place has changed and it still has that old rustic kind of feeling to it. I only added a few things like some bar games that seem to keep people happy, not only happy but also hanging out for an extra drink. Of course when you own a bar there is one thing you can expect to see from time to time. And that is people that are far too drunk and cannot seem to hold their liquor. As a business owner you are also guaranteed to see something which is an entitled Karen. This story combines both of those into one single person. I am what some people call a hands on owner in the sense that I can be found almost every single day at the bar working either in the back office paying bills or behind the counter making drinks. I know some owners like to just oversee things and let others do the hard work, but I watched how my family did it before me and took after. Grandpa and dad never once thought about cleaning a table or even the bathroom was above them as an owner. Anyway, this day I am working behind the bar and this woman walks and goes to the counter. It is law here that if a person is clearly already drunk, you are not allowed to serve them. Honestly, even if it was not a law, I probably still wouldn't because I don't want to be responsible for somebody so drunk that they don't know which way is up. The way this woman walks in I can already tell I will probably need to turn her away because she cannot even walk the straight line from the door to the counter. I wait for her to get to me though so I can try to resolve the situation as easy as possible. She orders a drink and is so drunk she is slurring the entire time and ordered it three times before actually getting it right. I also knew that there was going to be a potential problem with this woman. 
She looked like a stereotypical Karen, only drunk instead of driving a minivan full of kids to soccer. The big hair, the sunglasses on her head and her luxury bag she made sure to shove in everyone's face was sure of that. The no manners and demanding a drink the way she did might have been because she was a Karen or because she was drunk. That one I have no idea. I explained to her that since she is exhibiting signs of already being drunk, I cannot serve her. Just know she is slurring this entire time, but I am going to write out what she said. The parts I could understand normally. Karen, I'm not drunk, I've not had a single thing to drink all day and I just want to wind down. Me, ma'am, you are slurring and you cannot walk a straight line, combined with the fact that I can smell alcohol on your breath right now. I cannot serve you anything and the only thing I can do is call you a taxi to get you home safe. Karen, how dare you try and treat me like I'm some nobody off of the street. I'm a loyal customer and I deserve to be treated with the respect I deserve. I give so much money and now you're trying to steal it because I'm loyal to you. What she meant towards the end is totally unclear to me, maybe one of you know. Also, the fact that she kept calling herself a loyal customer and that she gave us a ton of money was very confusing to me. Keep in mind that I've never seen this woman before in my life. Not as an owner, not as a teenager and young adult working here and not as a kid when my grandpa owned it. I explained to her again that I cannot sell her anything and that she really needs to leave because at this point everyone was staring and getting annoyed by this woman yelling at the bar. People come here to de-stress after a long day of work and this is giving them the opposite. She tells me that she is best friends with the boss and that she is going to call him and get me fired. I then tell her that I am the boss and she is certainly not my friend. She tries to tell me that I am just new and when she will tell the boss I will be looking for a new job. I tell her the bar has been owned by my family for years and I'm not only telling her that she needs to leave, but I am banning her from the bar. She then actually calls the police and when they get there claims that I am verbally abusing her as well as discriminating against her for being a woman and that is why I refuse to serve her. They can also tell that she is drunk and I tell them the whole story and that I asked her to leave several times and was banning her. She had to leave or she was going to get arrested for trespassing. I guess she finally got the clue when the police told her that I did nothing wrong and she had to leave if I was telling her to. Then the craziest thing of all happened, she walked out of the bar and got into a car that was parked right out front. When we heard the engine turn on and saw that she was behind the wheel, the cops were running after her right of way. She actually pulled out and started to drive with the cops going after her for a couple of blocks. I might have abandoned my post behind the counter and went outside to see what would happen. She was either that drunk or that dumb that she thought driving drunk in front of a bunch of police officers that knew it was a good idea. I am just glad she did not get far enough to potentially hurt someone because she was too drunk to function at all. I am guessing she got a DUI but the police asked me to just go back into my bar and let them handle things from here. I usually don't drink on shift but that night I needed a shot to calm down. That woman is still banned to this day and out of curiosity I asked all my employees if they had ever seen her before. They all said no and as a last effort I went to ask my dad if he ever came across this mystery woman that claimed to be a loyal customer. Plot twist ripe stars, the Karen is actually OP's mom. <laughs> no, just kidding. When he saw the video he laughed and said that she had been at the bar once before when I was in school and not working every night. He never told the story because he didn't have video back then and did not think anybody would believe him. This woman had shown up about 7 years ago just as drunk and had almost the exact same fight with my dad. The only difference being that she walked out without calling the police and was never heard from again. If I ever have a kid that decides to take over the bar, I'm going to warn them about her because something in my soul tells me that she might be back one day. And yeah, Ripe Stars, I'm curious, have you ever worked as a bartender or in a bar in general? A few friends of mine have worked as bartenders and from what I've heard, usually at night you're pretty much always in for at least a little bit of trouble. However, most of the time it is not the Karens that you deal with, but just instead stupid drunk people. 
The next one is titled Neighbor Just Cannot Stop It. I know this is going to get some backlash because a lot of people on Reddit think wheat is a miracle plant. I have nothing against wheat and I voted for its legalization in my state, I live on an avenue in a mid-sized city. Houses lined up and down the streets, the kind of neighborhood where kids play basketball and hockey in the street. My neighbor is a single guy in his mid-50s, he reminds me of Dale Gribble from King of the Hill, but he smokes joints instead of cigarettes. I am talking Snoop Dogg levels of joints. I have no problem with you smoking weed in your backyard or in privacy, but this guy would smoke joints and talk with the neighborhood kids. This is not on his property, the kids will be shooting hoops in the street and he will be talking with them while smoking. My kids started asking me why Mr. Tony is always smoking those smelly cigarettes. I was in my front yard when I saw him sitting on his front stoop smoking and showing my son a red solo cup with a small pot plant in it. It kind of made me mad. The next time I saw him, I asked him if he wouldn't mind not smoking in front of my kids. I did not think this was a huge request, but now the guy wants nothing to do with me. He used to help me mow this shared swath of lawn and now he mows it exactly at his property line and avoids eye contact. I have nothing against MJ at all, but I don't think it is crazy to not want kids exposed to it. These are like 8 to 12 years old as well. Am I being a jerk here? Edit for clarification. Sorry, I left out a detail typing this quickly up on my phone. Should have proofread it more, I guess. So yeah, ripe stars, please let us know in the comments what you think about this story. Do you think that OP is the a-hole or not? And a user in the comments said, not an a-hole, I think it is reasonable that he gets to smoke wherever it is illegal to do so, I think also it's reasonable for you to want your children to not be exposed to secondhand smoke, pot or otherwise. Next, I think it is reasonable that you are the person who should decide how the topic of recreational use of weed is brought to your kids. So depending on the content of his discussion with your son over the pot plant, he would be crossing a line here. From here, I would apply my parenting rule of thumb. We should err on the side of contextualizing the world around our children as opposed to isolating them from it. So to me, the most direct course of action to avoid something I think is harmful would be to simply direct your children not to talk to him and explain why. Asking someone to not smoke around the kids could be considered rude, depending on the delivery, but not overly so. However, it's not my first choice since it leans towards isolating rather than contextualizing. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, I don't really have a clear-cut opinion on this one. I mean, the kids in question are like 8 to 12 years old. And I gotta say, when I was 8 years old, I did not know anything about drugs and I don't think someone would need to expose me to it. Then again, maybe OP just needs to talk to his neighbor about this. Possibly the neighbor is simply not aware of this.